everybody. I am so happy you chose to join us again today for our Bible study. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious Father, we come asking that you would open our hearts and minds. We pray, Father, that you would give the increase as we study your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we are still on article number 12, the harmony of the law and the gospel. And our author writes, we believe that the law of God is the eternal and unchangeable rule of his moral government, that it is holy, just, and good, and that the inability which the scripture ascribes to fallen men to fulfill its precepts arises entirely from their love of sin, to deliver them from which and to restore them through a mediator to unfeigned obedience to the holy law is one great end of the gospel and of the means of grace connected with the establishment of the visible church. So we are continuing today with Galatians, the third chapter, verses 19 through 25, and this is the NIV version. It reads, What then was the purpose of the law? It was added because of transgressions until the seed to whom the promise referred had come. The law was put into effect through angels, by a mediator. A mediator, however, does not represent just one party, but God is one. Is the law therefore opposed to the promises of God? Absolutely not. For if a law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness would certainly have come by the law. But the scripture declares that the whole world is a prisoner of sin, so that what was promised being given through faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Before this fate came, we were held prisoners by the law, locked up until faith should be revealed. So the law was put in charge to lead us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Now that faith has come, we are no longer under the supervision of the law. So for the uh, last month, we've been uh, we've looked at the promises given to Abraham by God Himself. In Genesis, the 22nd chapter, verses 16, God speaking to Abraham concerning the promise said, by myself have I sworn. By definition, to swear means to make a solemn declaration invoking a deity or a sacred person or thing to confirm the honesty or the truth of the declaration. For example, before a witness testifies in court, they must swear an oath on the Bible to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And then in the end, it says, so help me God. There used to be a time when folks didn't take it lightly, invoking God and the Bible into their testimonies. But we are living in a different time now. My point is that God is the supreme being. There's no other power or being that surpasses the God of the universe. So when he made promises to Abraham, he sealed it with an oath, a solemn declaration invoking himself to confirm the honesty or truth of the declaration. God made an everlasting covenant with Abraham and his descendants after him. Everlasting means unending, eternal, never ending. So after Abraham died, the physical part of that promise lived on through Isaac, Jacob, and then on through the 12 tribes of Israel. The spiritual part of the promise would not be fulfilled until the coming of Jesus Christ. The law wasn't given until over 400 years later, and it was not an addendum to the promise God gave to Abraham. It was an add-on. I mean, it wasn't an add-on. The promise was as solid then as it had been when God first spoke to Abraham. Paul in our text tells us why the law was added. It was not added as a tack-on to the promise. It was... It, it, it was to govern the behavior of the children of Israel. It was to show them their shortcomings. He says it was added because of transgressions. The word transgressions kind of, I don't know, kind of been whispering to me every time I read it. And so in in the Bible, there are three distinct words that categorize sin. They are sin, iniquity, and transgressions. 
sin is missing the mark or anything that falls short of the glory of God. The Strong's Hebrew Dictionary defines sin as an offense, and it can be both intentional, which we call a sin of commission, and then it can be unintentional, which we call a sin of omission. Sin is any thought, word, or action that is in disobedient to the will of God. Strong defines iniquity as perversity or, or, or more evil. I iniquity is a, is a type of sin that is related to inner character. It is a moral uncleanliness that is demonstrated and is often uh, a very intentional twisting or defiance of God's standards. For instance, God told Abraham in Genesis 15 that his descendants would not inherit the land of Canaan until the fourth generation because the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. And then finally, Strong says that transgression is the exceeding of due bounds or limits. It, it is a willful violation because the standard is understood by the transgressor. It, it's the same as trespassing, which is the intrusion or the infringement on another or on another person or another person's property. A perfect example of all three would be David in the 51st Psalms. He says, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. David was admitting to the fact that he had willfully crossed over the boundaries, the boundaries, that his inner moral character was unclean, and that he had intentionally done the sin. Paul says that the law was added because of transgressions. When God first brought Israel out of Egypt, he wanted them to obey his voice and to walk in the ways just as Abraham did. And, and, and he would be their God just as he had been Abraham's God. But they failed to do that. Jeremiah, the seventh chapter, verse 22 and 24 through 24, and this is the New King James Version. It says, For I did not speak to your fathers, or command them in, in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings or sacrifice. He, he said, I didn't give them that when they first came out of Egypt. I, you know, I didn't give them uh, commands or, or any of that. Verse 23 says, but this is what I commanded them, saying, obey my voice and I will be your God and you will be my people and walk in all the ways that I have commanded you that it may be well with you. He, he's saying, simply, I just ask you to obey me. Verse 24 says, yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but followed the counsels and the dictates of their evil hearts and went backwards, not forwards. So remember, transgression, transgression is knowing what you ought to do, but not doing it. Knowing you shouldn't cross the line, but doing it anyway. David knew that Bathsheba had a husband, and he knew when he had her brought to him that he was crossing the line, but he did it anyway. To make it even more personal, you ever knew that a thing was wrong to do? You, you knew where the line was drawn, but yet because you wanted to do it, you either verbally said, I don't care, or your actions said, I'll take my chances. It's like the blues writer that said, I'm going to get my head banged when I get home. But right now, I'm going to do as I please. That is why God added the law. Israel failed to just simply obey God's voice and walk in his ways in the ways that he commanded them just as he did Abraham. Or just as Abraham had done. It's like your parents trusting you to be mature enough to stay at home by yourself. And then they come back and find you and your friends have destroyed the house. So now they have to leave you with a sitter until they come back. 
to keep you from destroying yourself and the house. And, and so and, and so that you recognize, so that you can recognize the wrong that is in you. And, and so Israel couldn't be left on their own accord. So God gave them a sitter or a tutor called law to keep them until Jesus would come. Now, by design, a tutor is not your mama. Their job is not to baby you. In, in fact, a tutor is... If, if a tutor is doing its job, you will be glad when they are relieved of their duty. Their job is to point out your shortcomings and administer punishment for them. So God wanted to save Israel and, and, and lead Israel to what was to come. God didn't want Israel to, in essence, to self-destruct. All the promises uh, he, he wanted them to, to lead them uh, to all the promises that were promised to Abraham that could be received through faith in Jesus Christ. And God knew that left on their own, they would destroy themselves. So their tutor, law, held them prisoners, locked up until this thing called faith should be revealed. They, they had lots of rules and sacrifices and, 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 and rituals and that they were to obey or, or suffer the consequences, which oftentimes would be death. Paul says in Galatians, Galatians 3 and 24, so the law was put in charge to lead us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. Now, here's the amazing part. This justification by faith is not just for the Jews, but for the Gentiles as well. The promises were made to Abraham and his seed, who is Christ Jesus. Jesus is a descendant of Abraham. When we become Christians, we are made new creatures in Christ, and we become Abraham's seed. Because we are Abraham's seed, the promises made to Abraham were also made to us. God preached the gospel to Abraham. In Galatians 3 and 8, the NIV version says, the scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who have faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. So Abraham saw Jesus' day. Jesus said in John 8, 56, he says, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Abraham exercised faith by looking forward to the coming of Christ. We exercise faith through looking back in time to the coming of Christ. We today and Abraham thousands of years ago are justified the same way through faith in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3 and 25, and we'll end with that. The NIV version says, now that faith has come, we are no longer under the supervision of the law. And that's it for now. And hopefully you will join us next time as we continue our study. Until then, be blessed. Take care. Be safe. Love you. Bye-bye.